Happy New Comic Book Day, everybody. There are plenty of new comics out this week. I know my pull list certainly is not short, and it serves as inspiration for this video because I wanted to highlight some of the new comics that you can find in stores this week, particularly a lot of new indie books. So we're gonna start jump over to Scout Comics for the first book, which is Cannabis Number One. Now, this title actually sprung into my, or it popped into mind when I was looking through the solicitations and the title because it reminded me of an anime I watched on Netflix a couple months ago called Be the Beginning and in it Canopus, which is actually I think a star or a constellation, was mentioned throughout some at some point in the series. So when I was going through the series or looking through the solicitations, I read that and I was thinking, what is that from? And then I remembered, oh yeah, I just saw like just heard that name before. And it was it just really stuck out because it's just an interesting word. And I just hadn't really heard it before, so that stuck out. So, Canopus number one, Helen wakes up marooned on a lifeless alien planet 300 light years from Earth with no memories beyond a hazy sense of extinction level urgency to return to Earth. Joined by Arthur, her strange robot companion, she explores the planet to find materials necessary to repair her ship. However, circumstances are not as straightforward as they seem. Along the way, Helen's most painful memories return as monstrous manifestations hellbent on her destruction. Canopus is Castaway Meets Annihilation, fantastic movie, I love that movie, with a healthy, healthy dose of Philip K. Dick thrown in for good measure. Well, first thing was Scout Comics, because I mentioned Forever Maps. I don't know yet, I haven't looked it up to see if they're gonna do the same thing they did with Forever Maps, where this is just the first issue, and then they're gonna release everything in like a full graphic novel. So I guess once I won't know until I get it in hand, or I just find more information online. So then, it's the idea of this sounds cool, sci-fi stuff. I'm into it. Scout Comics, one of those indie indie publishers who have, as I said, with Forever Maps, there's one of those. Uh, Publishers who have been producing some good work, and there are a couple others here as well. But Cannabis number one, Scout Comics. I want to check this out. Plus, if the idea of Castaway meets Annihilation sounds interesting as hell, because as I said, Annihilation is a fantastic movie. If you have not seen it, highly recommend it. Castaway is cool, I guess, but I guess just for the kind of solo, like this character kind of on their own, even though. Like volleyball, robot campaign, big difference because I imagine the robot campaign will talk back. The volleyball and castaway was not talking back, no matter how much Tom Hanks' character wanted it to. <laughs> so moving on, jump over to Dark Horse Comics for Bang Number One, and they the solicitation info reads: a best of the best secret agent spy story. You got me hooked with memories he couldn't possibly possess. A mystery writer in her 60s who spends her retirement solving crimes sounds good to me a man of action with mysterious drugs that keep him ahead of a constant string of targeted disasters everything here is just lining up <laughs> i don't even remember all of this information <laughs> a seemingly omnipotent terrorist organization that might be behind it all and they're all connected to one man a science fiction author with more information than seems possible whose books may hold the key to either saving reality or destroying it a mind-bending story that ties in with past kent works i've never actually have i I'm trying to think some of the other Matt Ken works that I've read. Action, mystery, and also reality. So, this one just has, as I said, <laughs> as I was reading through this, it's just a whole lot of things that really just kind of catch my, that would catch my attention on their own. And then you're throwing them all in a pot together. And it just sounds like one of those just true comic booky ass stories where it's just gonna be wild and it should be a fun ride with a whole lot of different elements that should mix together well and works should work well in the comics medium considering the kind of unique ways of storytelling that comics possess so i'm interested in hell and i'm definitely ready to read this book so that's bang number one from dark horse comics and then jump over to humanoids for their superhero tale omni number five it's a superhero tale but it's quite low-key actually it's not the, like a typical bombastic kind of, it's bombastic, it's such a weird word. And I am actually behind on this one. I think I've only read the first two issues perhaps, but here is, here's the info. So Cecilia's life has taken a lot of unexpected turns lately. She's now leading Omni, Omnicor, a giant world-class organization dedicated to helping ignited people. So ignited is the term they use for 
people's powers as they kind of develop, basically. She has now formed a team to help her in her task, a group that involves ex-cons and activists. Interesting combination. As the second Omni story, story arc begins, has Cecilia turned to the dark side of Ignition? I don't know. Like I said, I'm behind, but I am ordering this one, so I will be able to catch up on these at some point. I just wanted to point this out because it does have Black Lady Lead, and she was, I think she was a medic, actually, and it just, it's like this independent superhero type. Obviously, I love superhero stories, and when you get with independent publishers, you get a lot of, a lot of them still make superheroes, uh, superhero stories, but they often come with different unique twists or just kind of delving into certain genres that a lot of the Marvel and DC stories don't often take. They're usually kind of relegated to like side stories. So with the independent side, you get those. So you get like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Omni or even Suicide Risk, stuff like that, where you kind of delve into these other takes kind of deeper so that is Omni number five from Humanoids and jump over to Image yeah Family Tree number four now Family Tree was I read number one and I was thinking oh you know what I'll just check this out so I ended up picking it up and ended up being a pretty good read wasn't really sure what to expect this girl turning into a tree she or she is turning into a tree like two little shrubs growing out of her or whatever. So it was the first issue. I've only read the first issue, so I'm still behind on this. But Grandpa Judd and Loretta are close to a reconciliation of sorts just as the crazed and deadly arborist closes in on their Chinatown hideout. So I should have put a spoiler warning if you were behind as I am because I don't even know what that means. In the first issue, she was just kind of... Uh, they were just kind of going around and like oh uh, they started realizing what was going on with her and it was it's hard to describe you just got to read it i recommend it if you haven't read family tree go check it out you can find first couple issues go check it out definitely worth the read definitely worth checking out interesting kind of i don't even know if you would call it fantasy i don't know what the hell you would even call this i don't know what genre a lot of times ed books have no idea what genre you even call them and then so boom studios as i mentioned before tends to have several hits on hand just ready to go. So <laughs> I have two of them lined up this week. Heartbeat number four, which I just read the first two issues of. Interesting book. I wasn't sure kind of what to expect, but, and I'm still, even after reading the first two issues, I still don't even know where I stand with this book. It's just one of those kind of weird titles where you have this character at the school who is, she ends up coming, I don't wanna say in trance, but, just in, in like seeing this uh like this other student like kill another kid and like just has she realizes he has like this taste for blood and then she kind of well she gets she's get kind of bullied and then she kind of witnesses this and or this kid kill this other kid kill this other student and sees him kind of taste her blood drink her blood whatever so she's dealt with all kind of trauma and so what she does is uh she takes a she steals a bag of steals a bag of blood from like a blood donation center or something like that she's having a, like a blood drive or something and so she takes this bag of blood and <laughs> she's she like goes to hide and she starts to drink the blood like it's almost like a juice bag it's weird like a capri sun like a, imagine a, like a bloody capri sun it's so weird and he comes like the kid comes in like he finds her and he tells her he tells her she's doing it wrong and he shows her how to say the blood. It's like, I'm like, oh my God, what is happening with this story? It's so weird. And I'm like, it's a five issue miniseries. And I'm thinking, I don't know. Like, do I want to keep reading this? I'm not sure, but I think it just might because I'm curious as hell to see where the hell you're even going with this. So all that being said, number four reads, uh, this is the character's name. It's, I don't know, I mean, I haven't pronounced this. D-O-N-A-T-I-E-N. -E it could be Donation, but Donatian, Donatian. I'm going to call him Donatian because that sounds cool. So Donatian has managed to escape the consequences of his brutal crime, which I just mentioned, only by charm and wit. But those close to the victim want answers and they will do anything to get them. When someone gets too close to the truth, Ava will learn how far Donatian will go to protect his secret and how much Ava is willing to accept. So, as I said, I'm not even sure myself how how I feel about this book yet. <laughs> I think I'm gonna pick up issue three. 
I still will pick up issue three because I have issue four coming. And we'll just see. I'm trying to just read them all anyway. But I'm curious as hell. If anybody else is reading this, let me know what the hell you think of it. And if you're just into weird books, if you haven't read it, just go check it out and see what the hell you think of it. <laughs> the other Boom series is Red Mother number three. Now I think this one is, this one might be the four issue series. It could be four or five as well. It's something like that. I know both of those are short series. So Red Mother number three, the visions through Daisy's, okay, so precursor, Daisy is lead character and her, she's walking, I think, I don't remember dude was her boyfriend or whatever, but they're out and he gets attacked by, he gets attacked and just completely just taken away. He disappears and she's left with basically a big gaping ass hole in her face where her eye, one of her eyes used to be. And through this, they use the red mother. So red is like a strong color throughout the, throughout the book because I'm only read the first issue. And what she, so I'll jump into the uh, info for this one. So the visions through Daisy's prosthetic eye are getting stronger and it's getting harder every day to resist their call. When a mysterious puzzle shows up on Daisy's doorstep, will it provide the answer she's looking for or only draw her deeper into the world of the Red Mother? Go deeper. Why the hell not? It's comics. No, just madness. So that's Red Mother. Interesting book. Kind of on the horror side, I guess you could say. I think of all this one, this one's probably the darker of them all. Obviously, because I haven't read the two number ones yet, but this is definitely uh, the darker of them, along with, I guess, both of those from Boom, actually. Heartbeat. Uh, this killer and then Red Mother here. So that's Red Mother number three. And the last indie book, Vault from Vault Comics is Sarah and the Royal Stars number six. I say this one for last because this is my favorite of these series that I've been reading, of these series that I mentioned that I have been reading. And it's a fantasy book, so I'll just read the uh, solicitation first. So after a fierce battle to escape the underworld, Sarah abandons her mission in hopes of rescuing her family. But the stars of Draco anticipate Sarah's actions, forcing her to draw on the power she carries, unleashing a force that will forever change her. So this one, along with, let me see, maybe Omni, but fantasy, because I, I mentioned this, because it, uh, fantasy stories and sci-fi stories are often some, like, some of the bigger hits in comics, but they can also be some of the bigger misses because they are, they seem to require just, it's like a perfect touch for comics because when you introduce a comic, there's a lot of things you need, like you need to be able to hook people, but you need to expand, like explain the world and build the world, introduce characters. And a lot of times with specifically with fantasy and sci-fi stories, you're introducing like different creatures, races, species, other planets, terminology, technology. So you're kind of, um, sometimes you're throwing all these things at new readers, at readers, and it can be hard because you can get, like re I can imagine, I've, there have been several books where I've been bogged down with ton, like just so much stuff because you have to build this world in such a short time. And then, but then the read isn't as interesting because you had to just explain so much. There have been titles in the past, I just won't mention them right now because I just don't want to. And, but Sarah and the Royal Stars is a perfect example of how to do it well. So if you haven't read this one, I highly recommend it. Vault Comics, such a good book. There are actually several others I mentioned, or several other indie books last year that were perfect examples as well. And I mentioned them in periodic videos, but Sarah and the Royal Stars, thumbs up. And for the hell of it, here's a bonus book. And you're lucky, I almost wanted to call this one a dishonorable mention, but I like some of the creators on this book and I like the character and I was looking up tweets and apparently some people are really really enjoyed the read so here is the return of Mr. Canada himself Wolverine and just happens I happen to be wearing a shirt featuring Wolverine himself right here so Wolverine is back Wolverine number one in this eight dollar book yes you heard that right it's eight dollars seven ninety nine in America US dollars but it's 72 pages and apparently it does contain two separate stories so it's just i wanted to mention i specifically wanted to mention this because it's an eight dollar book a new number one but eight dollars for a number one that i just don't imagine i'm just, like i'm just all over the place with this one and i've just seen tweets about it i searched this one a couple of times 
and just because I'm curious as hell to see what other people think about this, because I just can't imagine how many people are, are just shout out eight dollars for a whole new number one featuring Wolverine. But I mean, it's Wolverine, so I don't know. I just and I, even I'm on the fence right now, and I'm showing you all these variant covers, and there are several others as well. Even there are at least two I would even want, but I'm like I just can't imagine paying eight dollars for this book right now. Maybe I'll catch that at a sale. I don't know, that one cover Wolverine versus Sindel, uh, it, it does look cool. <laughs> I don't know. So here we go. Wolverine bit, uh, Wolverine's been through a lot. He's been a loner. He's been a killer. He's been a hero. He's been an Avenger. He's been to hell and back. Now as the nation of Krakoa brings together all mutant kind, he can finally be happy. With his family all together and safe, Wolverine has everything he ever wanted and everything to lose. Plus the return of Omega Red, fan favorite villain. I love Omega Red, dude was cool and fantastic design. So bringing him back, I'm curious as hell to see. So I don't even know. And then I, I might even pre-order issue number two, but I just wanted to mention this because Wolverine. So question for all of you, who's picking up Wolverine? Did you, <laughs> like, did you pre-order this one? Are you interested in all is what do you think about that eight dollar price tag again it is a 72 page book so i'm curious to see how the two stories fit together like is one like wildly different is it just some throwaway story they just tacked in to justify the price for people i don't know so that was just a short list of some of the books that i have coming from this week with the inclusion of wolverine number one and i'm still undecided about that one maybe i'll catch them in a sale i don't know but I just wanted to highlight these because you have a lot of indie books, especially a couple of new number ones, some new mini series that will be out on, that are out of shelves this week. And just kind of, I'm known for highlighting indie books on YouTube, as well as on my Twitter and Instagram. I was trying to signal boosting those smaller press books, especially with unique twists or just different kind of stories because my reading taste varies. So when it comes to my recommendations, they're gonna be all over the place as you saw here. So more comics, more stories, different stories, just more fun for everybody. So I just wanted to throw those out to you. And with that, I also want to get your thoughts. As I said, mentioned before, let me know what you think about that Wolverine book, the $8 price tag. And if you're reading any of these indie books that I mentioned, let me know what you think of them. Or did I spark your curiosity? with any of these titles as well have you heard of these if you didn't or just let me know so i'm just curious also let me know what books you're picking up to this week what new comics are you interested in and yeah just go to shop have some fun so that's that thanks for watching this is Daniel dragon saying happy hunting happy reading and happy collecting peace out